Hey everybody, so today we are feeding our oyster toadfish. So um, you guys have probably seen me talk about our, our oyster toadfish. Um, came in as a very small uh, little hitchhiker on some Tampa Bay saltwater rock uh, that we got about uh, between a year and a half and two years ago. It was uh, September, uh, September of 2016, I think that we got it. Um, so we ordered uh, 60 pounds of live rock from Tampa Bay Saltwater. Guy has a uh, lease out in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, he aquacultures live rock, live sand, and when you place an order, he air freights it. Uh, everything's uh, kept underwater. When you go to the airport, you pick up your boxes, you bring them home, open them up, and whatever's in there is what you put in your tank. Uh, it just so happens that one thing that was in our shipment unbeknownst to uh, to Richard, the gentleman who owns Tampa Bay Saltwater, and unbeknownst to us was a baby oyster toadfish. So it took us a little while to figure out exactly what it was. It looked kind of like a large tadpole. I'll put some pictures up uh, in this video of, of what he looked like the day that we got him. So nowadays he uh, resides in his very own dedicated 120 gallon uh, tank in our tank room. So he's the only uh, only living creature that's in there. He eats pretty much anything that uh, that we would put in there. Um, being an oyster toadfish, he even eats uh, eats oysters, clams. Um, we feed him typically uh, frozen shrimp, pieces of frozen shrimp, frozen uh, scallops that we buy at the uh, at the grocery store, all human food food grade. Today I'm feeding a piece of each along with a piece of salmon with the skin on. We only feed him about once a week, uh, sometimes twice a week, uh, just depending on our schedules and how active he seems to be. He's nocturnal, so he hides most of the time. The tank that he's in, uh, we have some large pieces of PVC in there, some four inch PVC along with a bunch of live rock uh, and sand because he will he will occasionally go root around and, and, uh, and stir sand up. But for the most part, he has put up home or, or uh, lives in one of the pieces of PVC. He's happy as can be there. He's very aware of what's going on around. Uh, if we're in the room and moving around, a lot of times he'll stick his head out and see if we're going to uh, open the lid to his tank and uh, offer him anything to eat. So I'm going to try and capture, uh, we're going to feed today and we noticed he was actually out and looking around when we were uh, walking around here in the tank room. So we're going to try and uh, capture a video of him feeding. He's quick. He knows the instant you put a piece of food in there, he'll wait very patiently for it to get uh, to a place that's close enough that he feels comfortable to, to lunge out and grab it and, and swallow it whole. Uh, he eats a pretty good amount each time that we feed him. Like I said, we only feed, feed about once a week, so trying to control his growth a little bit. I don't want him to get too large. This guy can get uh, you know, 14, 18 inches long. That's pretty sizable fish to, to be keeping in, in captivity. So we're kind of trying to keep his uh, keep his his growth rate fairly slow. The tank I keep a little bit cooler than our than our mixed reef tank. Um, I use the same salt mix, uh, even though it's it's a little bit overkill. But I, I do that just uh, just to make everything easy on me. Basically, I don't want to have to manage different uh, different brands of salt or different salt mix and, and all that. But uh, the temperature I do keep down a little bit. So I typically keep the temperature of his tank around 75 or 76. Don't really do any water testing or anything on this tank. Fish only tank. There's really no invertebrates in, in here. Uh, if there was, he would eat them. He used to have some, there used to be some fairly, fairly sizable uh, gorilla crabs in here with him and uh, they survived for a good year or so and then he eventually figured out that they were edible and he got rid of them for us so he'll also eat snails occasionally there are some bumblebee snails that we have put in here we'll talk about that at some point in time but bottom line is we had some problems with bumblebee snails so now if we do find any they go into this tank here with the toadfish and I know there's at least one or two still alive because I do still see them occasionally um, the other thing that's in here is some uh, some whelk snails. So another hitchhiker that came in, uh, a bunch of hitchhikers uh, uh, that came in were whelk snails. It, whelk snails are really kind of kind of hard to tell the difference between whelk snails and nasarius snails. As it turned out, we learned the hard way that these are actually whelks. We had one get from this tank into our uh, into our mixed reef tank, and I don't know when it was that he got in there, but uh, he actually 
bored through the shell of a Darissa clam that we had and uh, and killed and ate the clam. So that was confirmation for us right there that he would, those are definitely whelk snails. So there are still some of those in here. I think they stay pretty hidden from uh, from the toadfish. They bury themselves under the sand. Every once in a while I'll see one moving around. I know if the toadfish sees one, he's gonna eat it. So he has kept the population down. Uh, pretty good, but anyways the uh, the food should be thawed here So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up on the tripod and see if we can get a, a video of this guy eating So you can see his head sticking out there. That's uh, that's pretty much his home. That's where he hangs out 70% of the time. I know at night he does come out and move around a little bit. Yeah, let's see if we can get this guy interested in some food So slowly moving in is a piece of salmon there on the, you see it there on the right. He there sees he it and he's about to get it. Done. Boom. So how exciting is that? That is the feeding of the oyster toadfish. We got a few more pieces here. So that was a piece of salmon, just a, the same piece of salmon that Tish and I eat. Skin on, raw, obviously thawed. Just kind of drop it in. I, I drop it in an area where I know it's gonna gonna kind of slowly move past him if it goes by too fast a lot of times he won't get it uh, and then it'll float around the tank although he will come out at night and, and go searching and get it so you can't see him on video but i see that he's actually done with that piece and has kind of moved back a little bit so let me see if i can position the camera a little bit any different here and now i'm going to drop in a piece of scallop and uh he'll he'll come out for this this guy has never never turned down food you see how he peeked out he's peeking out right there that's because I put I put the food uh, in, with using tongs in the tank, and within two seconds of food being in the tank, he goes on high alert. So he's very sensitive to what's going on around him and, and in his home. And let's see if I can get this to to move over in front of him. He's already coming out. Yep, there he is. Boom, so that was a good shot of him, kind of his whole body. You can kind of see some of the colorations and and stuff of his body. Um, it's a really cool looking fish. He's awesome. Great big mouth as you can see. Feelers on the on his uh, around his mouth and I'm about to drop a little piece of shrimp. Um same thing, food grade, you know, human food food grade frozen shrimp. I cut it into pieces. These pieces are about about 1 inch by a half inch uh, and he has no problem eating these. So last little piece here, he's already coming out and ready. Let's see if we can get this piece of shrimp. Yep, here he comes. He is he is hungry today, so. Just to show us, look at his body. The discolor, all the colors on him. And there we go. Towel. So being the pig that he is, you can see he is coming out to see if there's any more gonna get dropped in there. Um, we're not going to feed him any more today. That was quite a bit of food for him. So uh, he'll he'll be good for several days and maybe up to a week. So 